right, let's talk about the Broncos. They've spent a ton of money. They've beefed up that offensive line like Chris Sims predicted. Bam. On this podcast and multiple podcasts, too. I saw you were I, yeah. on a Broncos podcast. Well, that was one of the things you said. On I, there. I, I mean, it, the Broncos, I became like at the combine and the draft. You know, there's a lot of Broncos media there. And of course, between Sean Payton and the Russell Wilson conversation, there was a lot of people that wanted my opinion. Yeah. And I kept getting, well, how does Sean Payton rebuild Russell Wilson? And I said, well, the first thing he's going to do is get the biggest group of people you've ever seen in front of him. And I just kept telling people that. And uh, yeah, you know, hey, sunshine's on a dog dog's butt every now and then and I got that one right but yeah they're it just it all makes too much sense it's all positive and yeah they've definitely been one of the best teams here early on in free agency yeah. as far as what they needed and what makes sense for their new head coach Mike McGlinchey Ben Powers on the offensive line you got Zach Allen off the edge on the defensive side Jared Stidham to back up Russell Wilson some Aj P Ryan some depth there running back was impressive last year with Cincinnati maybe time, sometimes more impressive than Joe Mixon exactly that, these all make sense for what Sean Payton is yeah. you know the big people like we talked about on Monday that's where Russell's going to feel good. He wants to control the ball. Like we talked about, Bill Parcell's school of thinking. Powers is a big dude. McGlinchey is a big dude. You know, I think the 49ers wanted to keep McGlinchey. But, you know, when you're a team like the Broncos who had a good amount of money to spend, it's a new head coach. Yeah, they're going to overpay maybe a little bit for a guy like McGlinchey to get his culture and first year off to a good start. So does that. Then, like we said, that Zach Allen, I think that dropped on Monday too, right? We talked about that on Monday. I maybe think it after. It was we were after. Done. I think so. Oh, what yeah. a great signing that is. I mean, one poor man's TJ Watt or JJ Watt. That's really kind of what he is. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say he's JJ Watt. You know what I'm saying, though. Is that type of yeah. role, you know, can play 4 3 defense end, can play 4 3 defense to tackle, can play 3 4 defense end and two gap and do all that. So he's very versatile, let alone. Who's the new defensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos? Oh, that's right. His old defensive coordinator from the Arizona Cardinals. Yep. So he's got an inside look and know what he really is. Valuable backup in Jared Stidham. Now Russell Wilson's got a little bit of a hot poker up his ass, right? He can't just go, oh, it's Johnny No Name behind me at quarterback. I could throw 74 interceptions today in practice, and nobody's going to care, and they'll never pull me. Now he's got a guy that, you know, pushes him a little bit, but is not threatening. And then Peyton can have a guy that goes, hey, I know this guy knows how to play quarterback. He'll be able to run my offense. And then you said it. So Ajay P. Ryan's hell of a player. And, a, and a, not only between the tackles runner, but we know that he values the Alvin Kamara come out of the backfield, catch the ball roll, right? Yeah. And that's what Samaj P. Ryan's done for the Cincinnati Bengals. He's been their third down back. So, yeah, I, I really like the signings. Maybe not your superstar signings, but you just go, really good player, really good player, good player, good player, good player, really good player. And that, that's, that's uh, yeah, good good sign for the Broncos. And it still all hinges on whether Sean Payton can fix whatever was wrong last year with Russell Wilson. And maybe it was the protection and just him being comfortable back in the I pocket. I think it's part of it. I think it's part of it. You know, we had too many weeks here where I said, look, I mean, he's looking at the rush. We showed videos, right? I There's mean, open guys. That's what I mean. So this is part of the the rebuilding of the monster is hey the don't monster. worry i got you protected this is why i got this big f guy right here and he'll circle mike mcglinchey and ben powers you just sit back there and yeah. look at the safeties tell me where they are who dropped here who dropped there and that'll be, all be you know part of this rebuild of his psyche and he looks at russ and goes russ let's ride let's ride because you're speaking my language <laughs> i like that uh so the broncos have spent a lot but the falcons have spent i think the falcons probably leading right now i'd have to see uh the the tape on that one but they've spent a lot of money on some premium players <clears throat> They got uh, Jesse Bates, the yep. safety, over from the Bengals. Johnu Smith in a trade with the Patriots. Uh, David uh, Onyemata, uh, defensive tackle, big guy up front. Taylor Heineke, my guy at quarterback to provide some shifty depth. And, uh-oh, we have a quarterback controversy once again. Um, so, and, and then Chris Lindstrom locked him up on the offensive line, locked up Caleb McGarry, so keeping some of their best guys. That's right. What do you think so far? Marcus Mariota no longer in the picture. He has been cut. Um, but, what, yeah, what do you think overall with the Falcons so far? I, I mean, like, again, for what they are and how they want to play, this makes total sense. I mean, when I think of Atlanta, like we talked about on Monday, it's, it's big, it's physical, it's ball control, right? That's what they're going to do. We talked about the guard. He's awesome. He's the best guard in football. Lindstrom. Yep. 
Mc- Caleb McGarry's good good tackle, you know, who's homegrown there and yeah, keep that going because we know they're a run first football team. So that's great. We talked about Lorenzo Carter. Yeah, they're into big people on the edge of the defense and all that. Lorenzo's a huge D end outside linebacker type. So that makes sense totally as well, right? And then, man, I mean, their defense needs, I still think, another splash player here. But, you know, safety was certainly an issue. Jesse Bates, best safety on the market and can do a lot. I mean, both safety positions, nickel, whatever, he can kind of do it all. So that's amazing you got him. Anyamata's again, again, a guy that can be a tentacle for the new D coordinator from New Orleans. Physical in the run game, going to be great there, but also can, you know, vouch for the new D coordinator in the building and, and you know, t- send his message to the rest of the locker room or the D lineman there. Mm-hmm. So I love that. And that's the same with Cade Nellis, who's a good middle linebacker they signed also from the Saints. So, yeah, I like it. Now it's to me, it's like, you know, what, what is it? Where's a, we going to get another receiver? What about the pass rushers? Maybe, again, I like the running back Algier, but if you're going to play that style, man, I'd, I'd maybe want to see somebody a little more talented there. So how are they going to play out the rest of this free agency? And then, of course, the draft is going to play a factor in, in filling out those spots too. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.